Hey everyone, Dominic the Primetime Treasure Hunter here. As you can see, I've got some comic related material in my hands and behind me. That's three boxes filled with all sorts of goodies. Now don't worry if you're not into comic books. I have other stuff in there as well. There's some vintage horror items, science fiction items. There's a vintage first issue Doctor Who item, which is amazing. Uh, so I'm excited to show you all that stuff a little later on. Now, in addition to that, I also have a non-comic related haul that is worth thousands of dollars that I got for free. It's crazy. So I'm going to show you that too. And before we get to that stuff, the first thing we have to do is we've got to go in Primetime Treasure Headquarters and pick out two posters uh, because two subscribers made some requests for a poster poll. So let's go see what they picked out. All right, so now it's time to do your poster pick. So let's see what Beth Collins, Jarrell Damon, and Carl Bach picked for us today. We're gonna go over to the poster box right here. And Beth wanted me to pick out this Footloose poster. So she said, go 80. So Footloose is definitely a personification of the 80. So we'll see what that one shows. And then uh, Jarrell wanted the Big Sean poster. I don't know how many of you remember me getting that big Sean t-shirt at the garage sale for 25 cents. And I did well with that one. It says, I am finally famous. Yep, that's what he's known for. So uh, the next one that was pulled out is pulled out by Carl Bach. Now, you know, Carl always has a flavor for the eccentric. And so even blindly picking something, you know it's going to be interesting. So Carl... I'm just gonna show you the top of this poster, and if you or anyone else want to see the rest of it, you could go to my eBay store. Anyway, uh, with that said, let's go get the other ones uh, unveiled. I don't think there'll be any uh, problems with those two. And as usual, if any of you want one of these posters pulled out, just let me know, and I will give you a shout out in the next video. All right, so we are gonna get to that comic treasure haul in just a few moments, but before I do, I want to show you what is by far and away my best ever free treasure haul that I've ever done. This is something that happened this weekend. There are three boxes here that have a combined value of well over $2,000 in terms of what the retail price was for these things. Now, that doesn't mean that's the resale price, uh, but still, when you obtain all this stuff for free, uh, even if it sells for you know $1,000 or $1,500 at the end of the day, it's still totally worth it. And it might surprise you uh, what's in here. Now, before I show you what's in these boxes, I just wanna address one general point, which is that when you run a YouTube channel, especially as it becomes bigger, you have to be careful in terms of identifying certain sources. As one example, and this has been going on for a while with my comic uh, sourcing, and actually the place where I went to uh, do some of that sourcing today is a place that I've shown many, many times in the past in terms of the results of the hauls. And as I have said, uh, that particular source does not want to be on YouTube, does not want me to take a camera inside and show you any of that stuff. And so I respect that and I don't do that. I love all of you, but I do not want to lose my source. So that's really Really important. So there's different reasons why you can and cannot say certain things. Another good example would be a retail arbitrage, and I'll you know give an example of that a little bit later on. Uh, because you know if you share a retail arbitrage item and it's in a popular you know chain store that everybody knows, well then everybody could go out and get that thing, and this has been shown that it happens that that's exactly what occurs, and then the value of it just goes totally down. So I don't do a lot of retail arbitrage and. That's actually one of the reasons for it. But sometimes I can't pass up on an amazing uh, deal. So anyway, so that's just a disclaimer. I cannot say exactly where I sourced this stuff from. I could tell you that I sourced it legally. Uh, and I could tell you that sometimes people just don't want stuff and they give it away even though you can't believe it. For example, all of those John Hebert signed comic prints that I've shown you that I sell for 15 bucks a piece, I got a hundred of those for free because the person who I made the deal with just didn't think they were worth anything thing and just threw them in you know at the end of a at the end of a deal didn't charge me anything extra for it so sometimes things like that do happen so here is what is in this so this is box number one I'll turn around to show you 
What's inside this box? They're all dog treats and they are GNC dog treats, GNC pets. In fact, most of this stuff is GNC pets related. And you'll see there's all sorts of prices on here. Now these were clearance prices. Well, the place where I sourced this from uh, just didn't want it anymore. Now there's nothing wrong with any of this stuff. It's not recalled and none of it is expired. None of it. Um, now the snacks here, these uh, expire uh, somewhere between July and August. So this is going to be a priority for me to get listed. I'm going to actually list uh, some of them tonight, but you know, the total of what's in this box, I mean, you can see here, like there's a lot of these for $21.99, for example, uh, it just depends on the flavor affects the price. Uh, the total amount I have it written here somewhere of what's in this box. Oh, here we go. This box alone has $832.41 worth of stuff. That's insane. That's completely crazy. Oh, I, 14 cents. <laughs> okay, I read it backwards, but still, you get the point. That's a lot of money, okay? So the next box, I almost fell off the chair. <laughs> That's how heavy this is. Okay, this one here, now, this is interesting. There's all sorts of uh, bottles and stuff in here. And um, these are things for pets too. They're different types of uh, oils. Uh, let me show you one where the price is really crazy. Like this is hip and joint health. Look at the price of that. $71.99 for the bottle. Uh, this one, $61.99 for the bottle. Um, here's another one, $37.99 for the bottle. It, it's crazy. Now some of these are, are not as expensive. Like these are some ear care wipes, for example. And uh, these are 10 bucks a piece, but there's you know, you can look inside how many different uh, bottles of these things are in here. Um, what I'm gonna do with these is, especially for ones that I have multiples of, like these replenishables, I'm just gonna list them all at once and just, you know, if someone wants to buy two, three, four, I'm just gonna do a multiples listing uh, for everything here. So the only thing I really have to do is I've gotta get these uh, stickers off, uh, but that shouldn't be too difficult, and so that'll be that. So this box here, where's the price on this one? Um, this one is $527.44 worth of stuff. So, I mean, it's just, that's just box number two. Now there's even a third box and this one uh, contains also some, you know, snacks and stuff and just different bottles. Like I'll show you some of them. Like this one here, this one is an immune balance one. Maybe I need to get Daisy some immune balance. Daisy likes these boxes, by the way. She's been sniffing around a lot. But for example, this one here has a price of 25 bucks on them. Well, there's, there's eight of them in here. There's eight of them in here. So the prices add up really fast. I mean, show you some other things. Um, what do we got here? Hip and joint. I mean, that's a big thing, obviously, with dogs. I've got a ton of these. Uh, these for 12 hydrocortisone sprays. Uh, for dogs. So if you have pets, if you're interested in any of this stuff, here's what I could tell you. I have no cost of goods into any of this. So my price for this stuff is going to be the lowest uh, around. And I have checked comps for these things and this stuff all sells. All right. Well, I just wanted to show you an example of just one of the expiration dates for this. So you can see here, uh, 1021, 1021. So, I mean, I just cannot, I can't get over this. This is amazing. This box here is, where's the price on this one? Okay, so this one, <laughs> this one's $978. I mean, I don't know if like, you know, someone looks at something like this, it's like $12.99 and it's just like, oh, I don't know, it's not worth it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, you add it all up, it's a lot of money. If we add up how much is in all three of these boxes, $2,337.58. Cost of goods, zero. Okay, so was I lucky in getting this? Yes. Was hard work involved in generating that luck? Yes, because what I could tell you is that even though I can't reveal the exact source, is that I have tapped this exact source many, many times and it has not always paid off for me. Um, but in this instance, it did. So, you know, sometimes you have to just keep working those sources, keep working those sources, and eventually you find yourself in the right place at the right time. It's like I say, you know, when I go sourcing for comic books at garage sales, I will ask a hundred different homeowners if they have comic books, even though there's none out. And out of those hundred times, 
there may be two times where someone says, oh yeah, I have a bunch in the basement that I want to sell. I found Mad Magazines that way. Uh, so is that lucky or is that hard work because you asked 100 different people and then eventually just by playing the numbers, it's going to pay off. That's similar to, uh, to this situation here. I mean, you've just got to keep working your sources, working your sources, and eventually uh, they will pay off. It's a combination of hard work and luck. So now let me get to listing this stuff. All right, now the next items that I want to show you are those comic posters I was holding up in the beginning of the video. They are 11 by 14 inches. I actually had seen them a couple of months ago in a local retail store for about $8 a piece, which was too high to pay from a retail arbitrage perspective. I needed to uh, wait until the price got lower, and so I checked back in, and sure enough, there were some clearance stickers uh, where they were being displayed. And I asked the person uh, in the store, I said, you know, which one of these are on clearance? And so the person went, took a look and said, all the comic related ones. And I was like, wow, really? Music to my ears, because they were non-comic ones uh, too. And uh, these are the ones. So if you like vintage comic book covers and want to display these in your man cave, uh, they are perfect. And so uh, there's some I only have one of like this. I'm going to show them to you in alphabetical order. Of course, Action Comics, uh, the covers uh, known for Superman right there. So I've got a few of these. You're going to see uh, the entire batch that I picked up here is a total of 27 of these. I wound up getting them for three bucks a piece. I paid uh, like $86 or, or something close to that in, uh, in total for everything. So now if anyone sees one that they want, um, I am going to give you an opportunity uh, to let me know that and I will, I will post it. Uh, the price is gonna be $19.99 a piece and that includes free shipping. So uh, there won't be any extra shipping fee uh, on top of that. So $19.99 and anyone who knows how I ship knows it's going to get to you uh, safely and securely. Look at that. If you like Wonder Woman stuff, I mean, this is really nice. There's a bunch of these uh, as well. So just let me know. I will make a deal with you if you contact me privately and you want to buy some uh, in, in bulk, you want to buy some multiples, you know, let me know that as well. You want different types, one of each, just tell me. Uh, I am not posting these right now uh, on eBay. So this is something that if you subscribe to my channel, it's only something you are going to know about and be able to access. So, and uh, I looked around at different places uh, for this location and couldn't find any more of these uh, for this particular uh, store, like other branches and stuff. So um, I think, I think I just, uh, again, wound up being in the right place at the right time uh, to source these particular ones. You know, if uh, Pam Lambros is watching this, uh, she's a big Wonder Woman fan, so I don't know if she'd be interested in any of these as well, but uh, real excited uh, to have picked up these. Nice scoop, nice score here. And these are the last few right there. We've got some Superboys and some Supermans, and this one, uh, World's Finest right there. So it's all DC related, so uh, great score there. Happy to have that. Um, like I said, I, I have so much other stuff going on right now that I really just plan to hold on to them and uh, you know list them at some other point unless anyone watching this video wants them. Just let me know either in the comments or send me a direct message. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you, and this is part of my other secret sourcing location that I go to. It's a collectibles dealer, and uh, this person has a ton of stuff. I've always talked about this person uh, on this channel uh, that I go to, and it is not the only source, but it has traditionally been a big source for me for comic-related items. Not just comic books, but magazines and um, ephemera and all sorts of uh, other things. You know, toys sometimes. There's, there's all sorts of things that come through this place. Um, it's been a little bit difficult lately making deals for various reasons, but I was happy today that we were able to make one. All right, so let me show you what's in this box here. And just as a little side tip before I open it, whenever you see an old box like this that looks all grimy and dirty and stuff, I mean, this is perfect. This is a great type of box. It's got like, you know, old writing on the top of it. This is where all the good stuff is, folks. It's not in the brand new shiny boxes. This is where you got to look. So what do you think's in here? Anyone want to make any guesses? Let me take the top off, okay? 
It's not really comic books, it's magazine related. What magazine did I likely pick up in bulk yet again? You got it, old vintage mad magazines. And these date back to the uh, 60s and the 70s. And you know, the thing with mad magazines that date from that range is I know from uh, history in terms of selling them, you go back to my what sold videos, I could sell uh, ones in that range and lots of 50, usually for somewhere between 175 and $200. Uh, so I do very well with those, and um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take 50 out of here and uh, start it at 200, and then see what happens with them. Now, uh, there's more than 50 in here. There's a total of about 80 to 90 of them in here. So I keep that number in my mind of uh, about $200 because that will impact how much I'm willing to pay for uh, the whole collection. But I already know I've got, you know, minimum, I've got like $200 uh, value like in this box and you know, likely uh, much more than that. So uh, not only that, uh, when I was going through this, I also saw some other things that were not mad magazines that were kind of uh, snuck in here. And I didn't even really look at them all in detail, but like, check this out. We've got a Batman 3D book here, so that is super cool. Um, we've got an old, uh, what is this one? Um, Poison Elves, I mean, this is this is an old one here, so that looks really cool. I love anything like that, anything dark like this. Uh, these types of covers, they're awesome. Uh, they do really well. Any of this, um, you know, fantasy stuff uh, does great. Anything with elves, dragons uh, does great. Um, there's a few epic uh, magazines in here as well. This was done through uh, Marvel. It's a Marvel magazine. Uh, this one looks pretty cool. Uh, ninth, look at this. Look at this cover. Warren magazine. Always look for old Warren magazines. They do really well, also. So, uh, so this one is cool. Um, you know, that's adult fantasy. So, here's another one. I mean, this one has a twenty dollar price tag on it right here. This one is uh, Mulehide Graphics. Uh, Elucifer, look at that. I love stuff like this though. Like I said, anything with dragons and it's vintage, definitely look this kind of stuff up. Definitely neat. Um, so uh, this is more like uh, dragon wings and gargoyles, but you know, same kind of thing. You get my drift on that. Uh, here's another one of these uh, Elucifer ones. So um, I've got to check comps on these things, but you know, I don't know. They've got stickers on them of like eight, 20 bucks, but you get the point here that there's a lot of. Uh, a lot of uh, potential value uh, in here. So that's it. That's a Mad Magazine box and um, some miscellaneous ones as well. So uh, I'm gonna go uh, take a break, list some more of that dog stuff, and then come down and we'll do the other two boxes. All right, I'm about to head over to those two comic book boxes, but before I do that, I wanna thank Danny May uh, because she motivated me to pick out this Anakin Skywalker poster that I showed uh, in a video the other day. This one just sold tonight to somebody for $25. So thanks again for the motivation, Danny. Uh, this one is going out tomorrow to someone. All right, so I'm back. Let's go over some of the goodies inside these two boxes. Now, a couple things before we do that. I don't want to forget to mention. Number one, how much did I pay for everything? For everything in these three boxes, and that includes the Mad Magazines that I just showed you, I paid $130. $35 for it all. Why did I do that? Because I already know that with the 50 Mad Magazines, I'll already be in profit with those. And then after that, everything is just additional profit. So these two boxes, especially, these you should look at as all profit boxes. And boy, oh boy, there are some good things in here. I just looked through them for the first time just to save some time for the video because if I'm thumbing through them for the first time here, uh, yeah, it might be fun, but I'm already running up against 18 minutes. And that leads to my second point, which is that I know we're gonna go over my 20 minute time limit here, but uh, I do have exceptions for that. Number one is live shows, and number two are treasure hunt or treasure haul videos. And this would go under the uh, treasure haul category. And the last thing before I go into the boxes is that, you know, I'm more and more mindful about people who are watching this show uh, who are watching with their kids and stuff. And I try as much as possible to make this a family-oriented channel. And so, 
there are some magazines in here that are ones that would be scary for kids. Like there's some monsters and stuff, some horror things. So this would probably be a good time to wrap up the show for the kiddos and uh, come back another time or watch it yourself and show them some stuff later on that you thought was cool. Uh, but I'm even going to help you ease into that transition a bit, assuming you might be keeping this on uh, just for like a minute or two and show you some stuff that's not a uh, horror related or scary. Now, Esme, if you're watching, I've got some uh, Star Trek stuff coming up, but I'm going to start off with my favorite because we all know that Doctor Who crushes Star Trek any day. And says she's going to be mad at me who said that. But look at this. This does not come along often. This is the first issue of Doctor Who Weekly with Tom Baker, my favorite doctor of all time on the cover. I mean, you're not going to see me smile more than this going through boxes like this and seeing Doctor Who. I mean, this is just the stuff that just makes me so happy. Like, yeah, I'm happy I found that granny coat back there that's on Cha-Cha, and I'm glad that I found the dog treats and stuff. But in terms of, like, pure joy, this is what does it for me. It's this type of stuff. I just love it. So it uh, doesn't come along often. Uh, when it does come along, it's often uh, sold in England and usually right around 40, 50 bucks, that kind of thing. So uh, I'm just real excited to be able to uh, have this. Now, of course, uh, the cover is loose. So that does take the value down a bit, but uh, they made these so thin and fragile. That's not terribly uncommon. There's some creases and stuff. There's some like little little tear on it and things like that. But still, it's so hard to come across Doctor Who uh, weekly number one that, you know, so, someone's definitely going to buy it. So uh, now Doctor Who weekly uh, eventually transitioned into what you see in the bookstores nowadays. Um, Barnes and uh, Noble carry it, uh, which is um, uh, Doctor Who magazine. And Doctor Who magazine played such an important role in the history of the show because it was a way that fans were able to continue to show and express uh, interest in the series when it went on hiatus from 1989 until they did the reboot uh, in the 2000s. So I have so many Doctor Who magazines. It's just great as a big fan of the show uh, and a collector of Doctor Who uh, memorabilia to be able to hold uh, the item that started it all, this first issue in 1979. So great piece right there. Um, if any of the things that you see here or anything that you're interested in, uh, just let me know. Uh, this person here who had this collection um, obviously had some interest in some items from England because there's a bunch of stuff in here uh, that is from England. Uh, this is an example of right here. One of the ways you could tell is you look right up here by the price. And if you see this P right there, that refers to pence. Uh, so uh, right here, we've got not only a Punisher title, but we also have the RoboCop uh, character right here on the front. So that's an awesome cover. Uh, this one is from 1989. So I love uh, that piece as well. I always love to get my hands on old Conan Saga magazines or any kind of uh, Conan magazine. Uh, we've got a Savage Sword of Conan uh, here as well. And then there's another one, issue 164. Uh, this is what I mean about, you know, when I say some of the scary covers and stuff. But um, Conan, I've done great with Conan, but it's one of those things that really does best if you sell them in lots, unless you have, you know, the first issue or, you know, some kind of key issue or something like that. But, um, you know, lots are really where it's at for, uh, for Conan stuff. So let me just flip this stuff over so I have a better way of organizing it as I'm going through it. So I showed you a bunch of Mad Magazines. One of the other things that I found a bunch of uh, in here that also does so well, just not as as well as uh, Mad Magazines, are Cracked Magazines. And there's some cool covers on these Cracked Magazines. Uh, these date back uh, to the 80s from what I saw. So we've got this cool Star Wars cover right here. I, I love that one. Uh, this one's also cool of the Ultimate Warrior Wrestling character. So that one is really neat. Uh, let's see who else do we have here. We've got an Aerosmith cover. Uh, so you could sell some of these individually based on the character uh, or, and I've actually got two of the uh, Aerosmith one, uh, or sell them in lots. So, and you can even mix them in with Mad Magazines. I've done that before too. If you have a few cracked magazines you want to get rid of, toss them in with the Mads and they'll uh, they'll sell well there. Here's some one, uh, one with the cartoon characters on it, like Roger Rabbit and stuff. So Daffy Duck, Bullwinkle, that kind of thing. So we've got that. And 
I also, when I went through here, found a few more Mad Magazines that uh, wound themselves into this lot. And so uh, we've got one here. This is one of the Mad Specials. So those are always thicker. And then we've got another one here from 1985. And uh, one of the things that I'm also excited about, in addition to this one from, that says 1967 for a cover sheet, but I don't know, I'm not sure. This one's like displaced from something because here, what this says, this is a coverless uh, issue, 1958. I told you it's hard to find 1950s mads, but even if you have them coverless, they will still sell. So don't pass up on 50s Mad Magazines if they don't have a cover. That's a big mistake. This The, the main body of this book must have just gotten displaced somehow. I'm not sure. Uh, I mentioned the Punisher, and here we go. Punisher 1 Magazine. So uh, I love the Punisher, and I'm glad to have this one. Uh, I have... This is why sometimes I'll, I'll... If I see Punisher number 2 or Punisher number 3, I'll just grab them because I know I'll come across a lot that just has Punisher number one. Um, these are not really worth much. I've come across them before, the Destroyer, but whenever you buy big lots like this, you're going to have some things in here that aren't worth that much. Now it's issue number two and there's three issues of it. Uh, so, you know, if I come across issue number one in one of my collections or another haul, then I could just add it to that. And that's one of the things about, you know, buying a lot of collectibles and, and comics and stuff is that I could just add things to things to make lots. Like here's another Mad Magazine that I just found in there too. This is from 1968. So that's cool. So I'll just add those into the other uh, Mad Magazine uh, box. Uh, let's see here. We've got um, the Sinner. Uh, I'm not familiar with this one here. So, you know, sometimes that happens too. Uh, whenever you're in such a big area, you know, even with me, with comic books, sometimes I come across things I haven't seen before. So... Um, that's interesting when that happens. Uh, Starlog magazine. I showed you, uh, in primetime treasure shed quarters. I have a box that's filled with Starlog magazine. So I'll probably just go and add these to that box, uh, into the shed. That's a perfect example of what I was just talking about. Uh, for star Wars fans, I've got some cool star Wars insider magazines. We've got the Carrie Fisher one here, and then we've got, uh, this one here with uh, BB eight. So if you like droids and stuff, I've uh, sold this one before, so we've got the Technical Journal, so that's cool, on uh, Tatooine. Um, I'm not sure if Midwest Picker is still watching this, but I know he likes Terminator 2 because he bought a Terminator 2 magazine from me one day, and here is uh, the Terminator 2 uh, comic book uh, adaptation, so that's really cool. Uh, yes, if you looked inside, you saw black and white, right? So they're not always color inside. The magazines tend to be black and white inside. Uh, for the most part. And then there's a second one that's not in as good condition as the one here, which brings up another good point. And it's something that uh, drives me crazy when I come across people who, well, I understand they don't know better, uh, but they come across a comic in a bag and a board like this, and they think just because it's in a bag and a board that that means it's a mint condition comic book. No, you could take damaged comic books and put them inside of bags and boards. It doesn't mean a thing. So uh, anyway, so there's that. Um, I don't know. We've got some just kind of random things here. Although I will point out one thing I'll point out about this, even though it says art on here, um, what you really want to focus on here is on the bottom. It says Fantagraph Books. Fantagraph Books made a lot of obscure um, titles, a lot of obscure comic related items that there are collectors that just look uh, for Fantagraph. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we've got the Comics Journal. Um, whatever is on the cover here is usually what's going to determine the value for these Comics Journals. So this one probably not worth so much, but I'll show you another one later uh, that does have some good uh, value behind it. Um, you know, Fox Comics, again, we're, don't focus so much on the Fox Comics, focus on that it comes from Fantagraph. So uh, you could even make a Fantagraph lot and, and try to market it that way. Uh, neat stuff. These are, you know, some of these more obscure, what we call underground comics. They don't come from like a major, um, you know, comic book uh, company like Marvel or DC or even Image or Dark Horse. And, you know, there's a bunch of things that are like this here. I'll just kind of uh, skim through them relatively uh, quickly for you here. And I just don't want all these to, to fall over, but this is just, 
you know, some examples of, of what I'm talking about here. So, you know, there's just a bunch of kind of random independent comic books that are in here. And there's some that are multiples as well. So I can make little lots for this graphic story monthly, uh, for example, and, and, and do all sorts of things like that. Or I can make a Fox Comics lot. And, you know, it's one of those things where you might be waiting for somebody who, uh, you know, remembers this when they were younger and wants to buy up a whole bunch of them or something like that. So you might wait on something like that for a little bit. Uh, here's some more of these comics journals. Uh, again, individually, I don't expect this one to be worth that much. Um, there's some longer, uh, like longer magazines here. Uh, these are from uh, Judge Dredd, 2000 AD. Uh, so there's a special niche audience for that character. I have sold it before. Um, don't come across these too often, uh, but every once in a while I do get them. All right, let me move this over a bit so you can see the box better. So what we've got uh, here is Speak Easy Magazine. So it's a book about comics. And um, this one here is also made in England. Um, there's some nice little bunchings that I can make out of this uh, little lot of books uh, because uh, they're in a similar issue range. So we have issue 99 uh, twice, then I have issue uh, 100, then I have issue 102. Uh, and this one here, because it has a pinhead from Hellraiser, this one sold alone for about 10 bucks. Uh, so, you know, combining it with some of these other ones, I can make like a little $20, $30 lot out of it. So uh, this is Judge Dredd again. So, you know, as an example, think creatively. How could you combine things? I could take this Judge Dredd out if I wanted to, for example, and combine it with these, or I could combine it with the other Judge Dreads. You just have to, you know, figure out how you want to do it. This one has the Joker on it in and of itself. Doesn't sell a lot, this particular one, but combined with the other speakeasies it will, or if you have other Joker items, it would sell with that. So that's how you've got to think. And I've got two of them, so that's definitely an option on the table. Uh, and here's issue 105. So they're all from around the same uh, range. Uh, this one here uh, always cracks me up when I see Sick Magazine, uh, kind of a raunchy one from the 1970s. It's got a little bit of damage here. That's to be expected with these old humor magazines from the 70s. Don't expect them in perfect condition. If you found them that way, great. But trust me, uh, people who collect this stuff will still buy it uh, in this type of condition. All right, now the next two, uh, you Indiana Jones fans are going to love these. I cannot believe I have two of these, uh, and they are in great condition. It is uh, the comic book adaptation of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade by Marvel, and they're both in excellent condition, so uh, I am really excited uh, to have both of those. Uh, now, in terms of some more of the horror-related stuff, like, you know, people watch the channel like Metal Flippin' Mel, uh, would love something like this. So for example, these uh, these old Fangoria magazines like with Leatherface on the cover. By the way, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, my favorite horror movie of all time. That movie is crazy. Um, right up there with that, by the way, would be uh, Halloween. And I believe there is a Halloween uh, related item here. Here's another one, Toxic Horror. Carl Bach, I know, uh, would love these kind of books. Uh, just this crazy, you know, ghoulish monster stuff. Uh, it's right up his alley. Uh, here we go. We've got Jason here. Uh, I know there's a Michael Myers thing here somewhere. Hold on. Here's another, here's another series here. Uh, this is uh, Fear. And so let me see what year this went to. It feels like it's 90s. Let's see here. This also comes from England and it is from the 1990s. You don't come across this, uh, this series too much here in the United States. So uh, it's cool. You know, we've got a nice monster on there. You know, we've got a ghoulish monster uh, over here as well. And then look at that. There we go. Michael Myers. Michael Myers, uh, super, super uh, popular in terms of a collectible character. Uh, so if you ever see anything with Michael Myers on it, if you're not super freaked out by it, uh, you know, pick it up because uh, there's generally some good money uh, behind it. So, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, what kind of stuff should I look for with comics and comic magazines? This is some of the stuff you look for. Remember, you don't have to have tons of the same issue. Just even individual issues like these uh, will sell well and they add up. Uh, here's a Lucasfilm Club um, item with uh, Sean Connery. And here's another one as well with Steven Spielberg. So those two would likely go together uh, as a lot. Uh, there's some more uh, Conan uh, magazines here. We've got Conan Saga. 
there's some sci-fi books back here as well, Science Fiction uh, Chronicle. So there's some multiples, and I could just, again, make some small lots uh, out of these as well. I can make multiple lots. White Wolf Magazine, uh, responsible for a lot of role-playing game books, uh, popular, sells easily for me. So be on the lookout for anything published by White Wolf, either a magazine or a book. And there's uh, two of these uh, right here. Uh, then behind it, we've got some, uh, just some random issues and stuff. Not much to say about that one. Uh, remember these, uh, this is the 9-11 commemorative comic book. Uh, I purchased a whole bunch of these with my son uh, at the comic convention father-son haul video. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, I have one in my store right now for 10 bucks that includes uh, the shipping. So I'm just going to add this one uh, to that lot and just, you know, list them as they sell. Um, the Epic magazines here, you know, some cool things about this. Uh, this one here is the last issue and they made a lot of these. So uh, there's some significance in that. Um, you know, this one has a $24 price sticker on it that may or may not mean anything. You always have to check comps. Don't just focus on sticker prices that are on these old books. Uh, but you can see here it says the last Galactus story, Galactus, a uh, famous uh, character uh, in Marvel, famous villain. Uh, so, you know, another random book right here. You can combine those random underground books together uh, to make little lots out of them. Street music, uh, not much to say about that one at all. So let me skip past that. There's another science fiction magazine. Uh, this one here, Shriek. Uh, that goes to, that's a horror one, obviously. That goes together with this uh, King Tut one. And there's uh, two of those. And then we've got another... Um, this looks like another random one. It's a golden age comics, um, you know, collection book. So, um, those usually don't go for, for too much money. So you'd have to combine it usually with something else to get some value out of it. All right. So that's it for this comic box. We're going to move this down over here and slide this box over and go over these real quick. Uh, before I do that, uh, just to emphasize a point that I made earlier, um, you know, you could do really well just if you do volume with these types of books and magazines and trade paperbacks uh, because, you know, these sales just add up and add up. Like, for example, this one sold today, uh, Faithless. It's not even a title you would even recognize, right? I mean, would you even think this had value? But it sold today for $15. It's all profit minus fees and shipping. Um, you know, adds up, you know, here we go right here. This is Star Trek one. Uh, this one is a treasury size comic, uh, sold for $10. So, you know, it just keeps adding up, adding up over time. Uh, so, all right, let's go over here. Uh, we've got, uh, the ultimate Marvel. And so, uh, they're not worth much, uh, individually. So sometimes you do have to make little combinations, but you know, we have, uh, different, uh, um, different issues here, although we have some multiples as well. So I could just, you know, combine one of those with, you know, one of these, and then there's uh, another one of these. So I can make a couple different lots and then, you know, I'll make, um, you know, a lot that would include this as well. So we'd have like two Spider-Mans in there and then the X-Men one. And so, you know, that's how you do it. You know, you just make these little combo deals for people uh, and they love it. You know, they feel like they're getting deals. They feel like they're getting multiples. And so, you know, it works out. It works out. I do it all the time. Uh, here's something that's not actually a comic book. It's actually a poster. It is related to comics, even though this actually comes from uh, New Yorker magazine. You see it says New York Drawings. Uh, really cool. It commemorates the illustrations that are inside New Yorker magazine. So I could see this hanging up in you know, some doctor's office in New York City or anyone's office for that matter in New York or even outside someone who has New York roots or just someone who likes the magazine. There's lots of potential for it, uh, but that's a great item. This is something I would fold up like this, put inside a magazine bag and board and, uh, and ship it out. So uh, we've got some more of uh, these epic magazines that are just kind of scattered around. Uh, here we've got uh, several issues of Savage Tales. Uh, now, unfortunately, this is not the 1970s version of Savage Tales, because if it was, uh, the first issue of Savage Tales uh, from the 70s contains the first appearance of Man-Thing, which is a creature that looks like Swamp Thing. And so uh, they both came out around the same time. And if you had that, that would be worth several hundred dollars. But we don't. We have this. Um, you know, this one here has sold for like $20, $25. And so uh, the good thing is I have issue one. I have issue three. I have issue four. 
I have issue five. I love these covers. I have issue six and here's another issue five, of course, because I love the cover. I've got two issues of it, right? So uh, anyway, so so that's good. I've got that. Okay, Esme, I've teased you long enough if you're still watching this, um, and I know you are. Um, we've got some Star Trek stuff in here that uh, you are going to uh, love. I'm just saying that from watching it, not from a purchasing perspective, um, but uh, just check these out. These are really cool. Look at this. Uh, really cool um, you know, magazines and collector's items about different ships uh, in Star Trek. And so uh, we've got these here. Uh, this one is uh, Warp Delta. This is the warship. So, you know, there's a bunch of cool ones here. This, there's more Star Trek stuff behind here as me. Hang on. So uh, we've got a, uh, a promo piece for Sonic the Hedgehog for any Sonic fans there. Uh, we've got a Star Trek Voyager. We've got a Star Trek Compendium book. So that's cool. Uh, Star Trek 30 Years uh, collectible uh, magazine there. Uh, let's see what else do we have here. Star Trek Next Generation Technical Journal. So we've got that. Uh, that's awesome. That's made by Starlog. Here's the 25th celebration. So you could do things like, you know, combine the 25th celebration with the 30th year celebration. You just got to think of creative ways uh, to combine things together. Uh, this is a little promotional item made by CGC, which uh, is the uh, comic grading company. I've talked about that before. Uh, I doubt it has much value, but it does have some cool uh, inserts uh, in it that show some uh, comic characters. So like, you know, for example, that if nothing else, I might just, you know, hold on to it and just, you know, hang some of that stuff up just for the images. Uh, there's some really cool um, uh, adult humor uh, magazines in here from the 70s or uh, 70s slash 60s. Uh, so we've got the Joker magazine here. So, you know, that's kind of funny. Some of the things that they've got on there. Let me just make sure there was no nudity on that. Nope, nope. All right, good. Whew. <laughs> here we go here. Uh, but you know, you can tell it's kind of flirtatious. And so uh, we've got this uh, laugh one here. So there, there's a little bunch of cartoons in there. So I can make little lots. Now, by the way, this one here, um, this is great. So I was talking about this one before when I saw these. It's uh, I Lucifer. Okay. Uh, these actually sell really well. Look them up. Number three is actually very hard to find because it's a low print run. And I just saw this one sold for $75 just for this issue. And I saw in the other box, um, in that Mad Magazine box was issue one. And uh, there were some other issues there. So I could even make like a lot, whatever. Um, I'm going to do really well uh, selling these. I might actually prioritize those to get those listed because I think there's some, you know, really good value in those. Uh, Voltron, uh, Troy Shockley from Mountain Man Treasures. Uh, he's got a great YouTube channel. He picked up a Voltron um, uh, poster from me recently. And uh, this is another one, although not quite as big as the, uh, as the one that I sold uh, to Troy. But if you like Transformers and Voltron, um, that kind of... Uh, type of series you would like that type of uh that type of poster um you know here's kind of like another one of these random kind of underground uh, magazines zippy uh star rider and the peace machine dates back to 1982 uh it's something that would sell for like 10 bucks or so um you know even though it looks really cool uh there's just not a lot of people searching for it but you know again like a 10 dollar item 10 dollar item you see what i mean how these things add up uh, RoboCop fan. So I've got another RoboCop uh, item. I could combine this one with that one from England with the Punisher on it. Uh, so again, that's just how you got to think about it. Uh, this one is cool. Marvel Preview Presents with Man Gods. If this was in near mint condition, this would be worth a pretty penny, uh, but it's not. It's got some creases and stuff on the top and the bottom. Uh, but this, you know, this still might be like a $20, $25 book. I've you know, got to you know, exactly pin it down based on the grading, but uh, you know, it could be some good money there. Uh, Nam Magazine, this isn't going to be worth a heck of a lot, although it is issue number two, so you might have someone looking for it who just bought the first issue and is trying to, there are collectors out there, they just buy them one at a time, not everyone buys in lots, so they might buy one, then buy two, then buy three, so if you find a two, that might be a reason to pick it up, is exactly for that reason, and you can see how dirty my hands are getting, that's from messing around with that old dirty vintage box before, is exactly what I was talking about. Uh, so that's actually that's actually a good sign when you see something like that. Fred Hembeck, my goodness, I love Fred Hembeck. I met Fred Hembeck. I have Fred Hembeck's autograph. 
Um, he did a great comic when I was a kid that I always remember uh, called um, What Would Happen If Fred Hembeck Destroyed the Marvel Universe or Fred Hembeck Destroys the Marvel Universe. It's just he made so many cool uh, comics and just he has a very unique art style. Uh, this book is tricky to find. He's done some books through Fantagraph and uh, eh, this one's like a $20 book, maybe $15 to $20 book right there. So that's good. Uh, Marvel Knights, nothing really to say about this. Just kind of a random one. Uh, thrown in here. Uh, if you want information about uh, the DC graphic novels, well, this uh, book, you know, kind of has a whole, it's basically a catalog about all the different graphic novels. So that's cool. Um, if you like, um, you know, figurine models and statues and that type of stuff, you might like a book like this. So that's a cool item. This next one is cool. Remember I was talking about those comics journals. And I said, it really depends on the issue and what's involved in it. Well, check out this one. This is just amazing. And this is great just to display, especially since uh, Stan Lee died. This one comes from, I think the 1970s. Um, let me see, I'm gonna open it up inside and we'll, we'll take a look uh, what year it dates to. Uh, but this one is like a, you know, again, I think this is like a $20, maybe even up to $30 a book depending on the condition of it. So let's see how old it is. Uh, man, we've got a detached cover here, so that really stinks. So that's gonna take the value down of it. And that's that's exactly what I mean, you know. You can see there how the cover's detached right there. So again, bags and boards don't mean anything necessarily. I mean, yeah, it's good that if you put it in there from the very beginning and protect it, but sometimes people will take comics like this and magazines like this that have damage to it. It's you know, mostly coming off and then they'll just throw it in there to protect it from keeping the rest of it from falling off. Uh, but still, it'll still have some value to somebody who just wants to read it and maybe wants the uh, cover to use as art, uh, but it's not gonna be worth as much if that uh, cover was attached. But still uh, a really cool uh, issue to see there. Uh, let's see what we've got here. We've got, uh, for all you Iron Man fans, we've got an Invincible uh, Iron Man number one issue right over there. And then we've got a couple of uh, other uh, Marvel uh, 75th anniversary issues. So there's two of those. Those look like they're in great condition. Uh, we have got a Marvel... Um, uh, nope, sorry. It, it is Marvel, but it's uh, Stan Lee Presents Thor. It's a coverless comic book, but it is vintage. I've sold this with the cover on it before. I might just hold on to this just for like, you know, vintage, you know, artwork that we could clip out and use on different uh, projects, uh, you know, for Mrs. Primetime. Uh, this one I really love, and this one is in great shape. This is the Marvel Superhero Secret Wars. If you ever see anything with Secret Wars on the cover, definitely look into picking it up because people love anything Secret Wars. I loved it when I was a kid. Um, and this is the uh, coloring book, has some posters inside. This is around a $20, $20 to $30 book right there. So that's good to have. Uh, Surf Tunes is the next one here. Uh, this is uh, just, you know, just an old cartoon uh, book related to uh, surfing. It's got some damage on it. It's got some staining, but, you know, people love this stuff. It comes from the 60s, and, you know, again, it's it's along the lines of those humor books that I showed earlier. Some of the old horror magazines, uh, you know, people expect, again, some type of damage on it, so so don't worry about that. There's, there should still be a buyer uh, out there for it. If not, if you couldn't sell this, then this would be something you might combine with some of the other humor magazines and just try to sell it. Uh, that way. So just, you know, continue to think of creative ways uh, to create value uh, for your uh, for your buyers. Uh, Call the Barbarian, uh, number one. Uh, too bad it's not in excellent condition in mint or near mint condition. Uh, so in its current state, this is probably only a, a $10 comic book. Uh, as you can see, there are similarities uh, to Conan the Barbarian. You could even package it together with Conan books to try to move it that way because there are people who like these warrior related comic books. Oh, and look at this. I didn't even see this when I went through it before. I showed you that nom number two. Well, look at here. We've got the nom number one and uh, this is in great shape. The cover is on fine, no issues. Uh, so we could probably sell that number one and number two. Uh, this is an old uh, Warren uh, magazine right here, um, The Rook. This is about a $10 uh, comic book right there. Uh, we've got some, I showed you that uh, New Yorker magazine. Uh, these are some New Yorker um, magazines. Now, 
this is the only one that has a fully intact cover, but you can see it's from 1947. 1947 New Yorker magazines, you know, generally go for somewhere between 20 and 30 bucks. $30 is absolutely not unheard of for these. Uh, so this one I might be able to get 30 bucks out of. And then, you know, we've got these two here that have some cover damage to them. And so I would likely just throw these in as a lot, disclose the damage with these. This one would be the main focus point. And so, you know, it could just up the price like a little bit more uh, for including some of those other ones. Uh, this down here, these are um, down on the bottom. This is made by a company called Boom Studios. I've sold a bunch of stuff uh, through there. Uh, this is a series called uh, Mouse Guard, uh, Legends of the Guard. And I did look up some of the comps on these and depending on the issue, um, some of these uh, sell for like 10 bucks or, or more. Uh, so I have uh, multiple issues here. I can make multiple lots out of these and, and sell them off that way. Uh, let's see. Uh, I guess we'll end off with, oh, look, my goodness. I didn't realize there were two sections of these in here. So here's another one right there. There's another lot of all of these right here. So that's crazy. Uh, there's another one of these Marvel Knights magazines. And then lastly, and, uh, leave it to, leave it to this guy to cause problems for us here. Yes. Ozzy Osbourne always causing problems, even at the end of a primetime treasure hunter video. That's all right, Ozzy. We still like you. Uh, Todd McFarlane, I've always talked about him. Make sure you look out for anything by him. Toys, comic books, anything with his name on it. Very popular. He's one of my favorite artists. So uh, it's good to end off on, uh, on a Todd McFarlane note there. So um, anyway, I hope that you enjoyed seeing this haul. Uh, I am super pumped up with everything that I got. I mean, this is just a big treasure hunt uh, score when you combine all those dog food and uh, dog related items, all those pet items uh, with the signs that I got today. And then all of these comic books and magazines and stuff. I mean, it's just amazing. Just building up the inventory. And uh, I can't wait to get this stuff listed and see if there's anything that any of you are interested in as well. If so, let me know. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure that you comment down below if you have any questions anything like that and make sure uh, that you subscribe of course that's real important we still have 50 percent of people watch the videos that aren't subscribing so please 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 if you enjoy the the content make sure you subscribe all right everyone don't forget to come to my live show i'm going to be interviewing uh carrie from american arbitrage the king of tiktok for resellers this guy's amazing and he knows a ton about collectibles so you don't want to miss it 9 p.m eastern standard time wednesday night I'll see you back the next one, everyone. Take care.